And here we go again. We're going to hear the same thing. Maybe uh, one more. No, we're not going to be doing that, though. So uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Mark Elfstrand. Most of us uh, here today probably have connected before in one way or another. So we're glad to have you here with us for the first of uh, an eight-part series. That uh, film, of course, Rocky, is kind of an interesting series. The first film was produced for $960,000 and uh, then grossed $224 million in the box office. And that's why they say about it, it was a rags to riches story. The other interesting thing about Sly Stallone there is is that, uh, of course, he wrote the script for it, and then he submitted the script for it, and then he had a contingency on it. If they were going to make it into a movie, who had to be the star? And it turned out to be him, and from that we get this franchise. And so we have seen a person who has, you know, decided in his own life that he needed to do something different. And that's about what we're going to be discussing here over the next eight weeks. What does that mean? It means that oftentimes in life we need to be retrained. Any Bears fans in the room by any chance? Bears fans here? Yeah, okay. Well, of course, this is a different year for uh, Bears and all pro, uh, pro sports. But you know what happens before the season starts? They all go into training. Exactly. And why do they do that? Because they don't know how to play football? Well, of course they know how to play football. But they have to get reoriented to the game, and sometimes they get a new playbook. And when they get a new playbook, they have to learn everything new again. In other words, they have to be retrained. And that's oftentimes the way it is when it comes to our own lives. We need retraining to think and act like men. And so that's what uh, this series is all about. So uh, with us this morning and uh, throughout this series is John Bell. Uh, John describes himself as a teacher, uh, a trainer, and coach. I don't think he can get you into physical shape like that. I don't know. Maybe he can. But uh, in his first 15 years of ministry, uh, John worked with Chosen People Ministries, and uh, he's been a church planter and evangelist, and in 1989 became the senior pastor of Grace Point Church in Naperville. He was there for 25 years. He also served as the uh, founding member and transformational director for Pinnacle Forum in the greater Chicago area. He has worked with the New Canaan Society and Pinnacle Forum as a speaker and equipper, and he leads a number of groups for men in the uh, Chicago area and uh, disciples men one-to-one throughout Chicago. He's worked with churches, mission organizations, companies, and individuals to develop relational leadership, and this led him to begin John Bell Ministries in 2017. I first met John back in 1999, and he and I had some early discussions about uh, my work in starting small groups for guys in places that I've lived, and that led to a discussion about whether I had an interest in working with men's ministry at his church in Naperville. Uh, That uh, is something that I pursued with him. We we worked together there for about five years, and it became a highly successful men's ministry program. So I've seen the impact that men's ministry can have and the hearts of men who get their lives changed. And uh, I think you will find that over the next eight weeks here, that there's some material that can make a profound difference difference uh, in your life. So with that as a little bit of uh, background as we get started this morning, uh, let me introduce to you again my friend, John Bell. Well, good morning. Thanks for coming out on a Saturday morning like this, and uh, I'm excited not just about today, but about the next eight weeks. Um, I've had a burden for many years to see men at their best. And that's not what we see in the world, is it? We often see men at their worst, and we see them presented and looked upon by others as men at their worst. About uh, two years ago, when I started this ministry, uh, Amazing Men Ministries, I was talking to a friend of mine, Tom Cole, longtime friend. I said, I'm going to start a new ministry for men. And he said, well, what are you going to call it? I said, I'm going to call it Amazing Men Ministries. And he said, well, who doesn't want to be amazing, John? And that's true, isn't it? Who doesn't want to be amazing? Um, Let me start with what an amazing man is not. You can have an amazing jump shot and still not be an amazing man. 
You can be highly successful in business and still not be amazing. You can be very good looking and still not be amazing. You can have a great intellect and not be amazing. So what is it that makes an amazing man? Well, here's the definition of amazing. Astonishing, astounding, stunning. Here's actually my favorite. Startlingly impressive. Let me give you, to start with, here's, here's what we're aiming at. An amazing man lives an amazing life that is startlingly impressive. Now, what that means is, along the way, you're going to have to become amazing. And it's only when you get to the end that people are going to say, people who know you, people who observe you, they're going to say, now that was a startlingly impressive man. That was an amazing man. How can, how can these next eight weeks help you in this? Mark, Mark said, I'm going to give you some great information. I, I always strive to give people great information. But, but what I've learned over the years, even when I give you great information and present it to you in an amazing way, it's not enough. You know, that's what that video is all about. It's, it's all about you practicing every day, every day for the rest of your life, and, and, and doing it with a group of men. So how is this series different? I know these three guys right here, they, they started with me 20 years ago, and they've been together as a group. We actually called them fire teams in those days. You guys remember that? And uh, they've been together and they meet every couple weeks for all these 20 years. And, and honestly, it's that kind of thing that we're looking for. You can't do this by yourself. You need to do it in community with other men. So how is this series different? I've got a number of things here and this is where you start filling in the notes, okay? So get your pens ready, get your notebooks ready, and here's the first one. Here's what makes this, this series different. First, it's based on ancient wisdom, ancient wisdom, and modern science. So what we're doing in these eight weeks is we're going to combine ancient wisdom and modern science. So let me give you a couple examples. Ancient wisdom says you need to learn to forgive and you need to practice forgiveness, right? Do you know that modern science has discovered that when you don't forgive, you actually burn up synapse in your brain? And you know what the synapse is. It's like the train terminal. It's where the neurons, you know, come into. And, and you burn up those connections. So in, essentially, you make yourself stupid. When you don't forgive, you make yourself stupid. And, and yet ancient wisdom has been telling us all along, you need to learn to forgive. Here's another one. You can go to Walgreens and get a medication that will help you produce dopamine and oxytocin. You know, dopamine is that kind of feel-good feeling, that that chemical that your brain releases um, so, that, so that you have this, this feeling of euphoria, you know, this feeling of, I can do this. It also produces oxytocin. You know what oxytocin is? Oxytocin is that chemical that causes you to want to bond with someone else. It, it happens in love. It happens between a mother and a child. And, and the brain produces that. And... and uh, you can actually buy a medication or a, 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 med a, a, a pharmaceutical that will help you with that. Or, or, I can save you money. Scripture and ancient wisdom says you should be grateful. In all things, you should give thanks. You should be grateful. Do you know what gratefulness produces? 
in the brain automatically? Dopamine and oxytocin. So, so you understand we're combining ancient wisdom and modern science. Secondly, it is aspirational. What we're going to tell you is how your brain was designed and how men were supposed to be. You understand, guys, that you were all supposed to be amazing? That's, that's not just for a few men. That was for all men. So, so it's aspirational. So when we talk, we're going to talk about this is how God sees you. He, this is how God plans for you to be. Thirdly, it's based on joy. It's based on joy. Dr. Alan Shore from UCLA, who's known as the Einstein of uh, brain science, basically says that the right side of the brain, which is your relational side, was made to run on joy. And here's the definition of joy. Joy comes from being with people who love being with you. It's, it's people whose eyes light up when they see you. It's when your eyes light up when you see people that you want to be with. And then here's the num number four. It results in character change. It results in character change. Often we think of, of character as, as uh, you know, some kind of moral aspect or um, something that we willfully decide to do. This is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> but character is, is much deeper than that. Here's a definition of character. Character is the embedded automatic responses to our relational environment. It's our instantaneous behavior that flows naturally from our hearts. Let me give it to you simply. Your character is revealed by your automatic, pre-conscious response to situations in your life. Here's a simple one. Someone cut you off in traffic. You walk out to the parking lot and somebody keyed your car. Um, you lost your wallet. Your stomach tightens up. Your, your palms get sweaty, right? All of that reveals your character. Here's a couple things to remember about character. Amazing men don't wear masks. We don't wear masks, and I don't mean like COVID masks. I mean, I mean we're, we're transparent. We don't wear masks. And here's another thing about amazing men. This has to do with character. Amazing men don't get triggered. I've learned over the years what triggers me, and, and over the years I've kind of tried to retrain my brain to respond in a completely different way. And that's, that's what real transformation is. And, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So what are the obstacles? I want you to know, I always like to know when I get into something, what am I up against? What am I facing? Here's the first obstacle, and maybe one that you don't even know about. Insecure attachments. Insecure attachments. This is, this is bad because it's in the first few years of your life that you establish what is called a relational foundation and an attachment pattern. There's, there, there's secure attachment, and a secure attachment is just someone in those first four or five years of life that was valued, that was loved, that, was, that had all of their needs met, and, and that they, they, there was an emotional connection especially with mom and then dad. But here's what happens to a lot of guys, is they don't get that. And then it shows up in, in one of three ways, and these are the insecure attachments, dismissive, distracted, or disorganized. And I want to focus on one of those, dismissive. If you are a man, and, and you cannot connect with others, especially at an emotional level, especially at a level where, where you 
not agree with the other person's emotions, but you can actually connect with them, then here's what you've learned. You've learned to be dismissive. And the reason that you are dismissive is because that's exactly what happened to you. You were, you were taught to be stoic. You know, stiff upper, upper lip. Don't cry. Don't show your emotions. And, and men, in the world of men today, we, we see a lot of men who are dismissive. And that will prevent you from being amazing. Here's the second one. Unresolved trauma. And we're going to get into that more. Unresolved trauma. There's two kinds of trauma. There's the abuse, which that one is readily apparent. Someone hurt you. Someone injured you either emotionally or mentally or physically or sexually or, right? I mean, that's, that's one kind of trauma, and they call that trauma B. But trauma A is neglect. And trauma A is the one that is the more dangerous because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what's missing. It's, it's like growing up in soil where there was a lack of nutrients. There wasn't the proper kind of uh, culture, or the proper kind of surrounding to grow up in. And by the way, this, this thing of trauma, uh, especially that, that abuse trauma, but, but even the, ne the neglect trauma, you have to tell your story to get that out. It has to be processed. That's, that's why you guys being together for so long is so important, because as you said to me this morning, we know everything about each other. Because it's as you, as you learn to tell those stories, that's how God designed for us to, to process that. Because other people can help you see what you are failing to see. Here's <clears throat> obstacle number three, lack of maturity. Lack of maturity. I think most of the problems in the world, by the way, are a lack of maturity. It's... it's you know, this, this whole series is going to be built on something called the life model, and it simply traces our emotional and our relational life along the same lines as our biological growth. So we're going to talk about what, what it means to be an infant, a child, a young adult, a parent, and then finally an elder. And there are needs and tasks at every level. Number four, a shortage of role models a shortage of role models and community. Do you know how men learn? I learn by seeing another man do it. I learn by being reminded of what I'm supposed to be. I need someone in my life that's, that observes me and says, John, I know that's what you did, but that's not what we do. Number five, deficiency of spiritual intimacy. You men need to know that, that there's a radio signal from hell that is constantly sending out two messages. You don't measure up, and nobody cares. And, and that can only be countered with this spiritual intimacy so that we hear another voice that says you have great worth and I will never leave you obstacle number six and this is what this is what these eight weeks are all about and and hopefully you'll develop some relationships with some other men or maybe you have those relationships and you can take this material to them it's a failure to practice here's the good news about the way God made the brain it has great plasticity. You never lose the ability, especially from the relational standpoint in your brain, you never lose the ability to grow, to increase your joy, to increase your joy reservoir and to learn how to return to joy. You know, if, if you get really good at this, <clears throat> here's, a, here's a wonderful promise. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what you're facing, you can return to joy in 90 seconds. Amazing men can return to joy in 90 seconds. That doesn't mean, you know, giddy laughter. 
It just means that even when you're angry or fearful or sad or whatever it is that you're going through, you can mix it with joy. In fact, today at the end, we're going to have you go through uh, an exercise that's going to help you mostly with this whole idea of joy. So where do we begin? Let me quickly go through. These are the habits now. So today's our introduction. The next six weeks, we're going to take each of these habits and break them down. Okay? First, I want you to, there were, there were some cards in the back. Take one of those with you, put it in your wallet, and here's what it says. Because this is what you're up against, and it's inside of you. It's your old heart versus your new heart. And the whole idea of being an amazing man is learning how to live out of the heart that Jesus gave you. Learning how to live out of that new heart. Here's the, here's the, uh, what we say about what we're up against. Overcome the impulse to be friendless, clueless, feckless. Someone asked me, what is feckless? Well, it's an old Scottish word. Feck means strong, courageous. So if you are feckless, <laughs> you are without courage or strength. We have a lot of feckless leaders in this world today, so-called leaders. Ruthless, offensive, or lifeless. Here's the six habits. The first one, be sticky. Be sticky. Here's the ancient wisdom for you. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Do you know the word stick there is glue? You and I need to have those loyal relationships in which we glue ourselves to the other person, even when we don't agree, even when things aren't going the way in the relationship the way we want. So you have to learn to be sticky. It's learning to be sticky. It's the word cleave, by the way. Same word in Genesis 2, uh, 24, where a man is commanded to cleave or stick or be glued to his wife. Second one, be inquisitive. Be inquisitive. Here's the most important question that a man can ask with regard to being inquisitive. How can I become the amazing man I was designed to be? Your only competition in this world is who you are and who you were meant to be. Right? And, and an amazing man closes that gap. And, and, and reaches the destiny that he was designed for. Number three, be gritty. Be gritty. Being gritty requires you to learn to suffer well. <laughs> Do you, I got bad news for you. You're going to suffer. I got good news for you. You can learn to suffer well. And, and that's what we're looking for. So we're going we're gonna to talk about how to suffer well. And, and grit, you know, that, that resilience. One of my favorite French words, resilience. Number four, be protective. Do you know that God designed your brain to automatically notice weakness? You can't stop your brain from noticing weakness. But what you can do is you can change your response to weakness. In the, in the movie, American Sniper, there was a conversation that the father had with his two sons. I don't know if you've ever seen it. He said, Son, sons, there are three kinds of people in this world. There's, there's wolves, there's sheep, and there's sheepdogs. And, and you and I have to learn to become uh, protective. Be protective. This is how you... Re you will know whether or not you're protective based on how you respond to weakness. Do you take advantage of it? Or is your response to protect it? Number five, be magnetic. Be magnetic. And, and this, being magnetic, it, it's what your, especially your wife felt and you felt when you first saw each other. Do you remember that? And, and what happens to men is they're good at the pursuit. They're, they're not good at the maintenance. 
And, and you need to maintain and continue to grow your magnetism. Um, number six, be inspirational. Be inspirational. You know what it means to inspire? The word inspire means to breathe life into someone. And, and we're going to talk about being a mentor, being a coach. I'm at the age right now where I should have the most life to give. I don't always have the most energy that I used to have, but I have the most life. I now can pour into more people than I've ever been able to before. And, and that's what we want to become as amazing men. We want to become inspirational. So that's what the journey looks like, guys. I'm looking forward to it with you. It's going to follow this format every week. Every week we'll have, we'll have a video for you. And uh, Mark or Dean uh, are going to get up and, and introduce what we're talking about. Then I'm going to talk for about 20, 25 minutes, which is you know, pretty short for me. And uh, then uh, from there, uh, Mark, Mark and Dean are going to explain from there. So thanks for coming again. Well, uh, I like to say when uh, you hear a message like that, uh, either you didn't pick something up from that or perhaps you just weren't listening uh, to what was being said because there's going to be rich nuggets in every one of these sessions that you will have as a takeaway. And I hope you're already writing notes about that that you can ponder. And, of course, uh, the Scriptures tell us that we should be meditating on things in our hearts, specifically things of the Bible. And as we meditate, that's the way we kind of, just like you're tasting a steak and you're just, you're just chewing on that thing and enjoying it and it's it just it massaging it in your mouth as you say, oh, this is fabulous. And uh, that's what you want to do when you get nuggets, real true gems that you can take. Uh, I actually have uh, on my iPhone um, um, a few of them in my notes section, just quotes that I collect over life that I consider to be in that very same realm. Things that you go, wow, that was really profound. And I think you're going to come out of this series with several profound pieces like that. Well, I mentioned, uh, of course, about the uh, stake here uh, just a moment ago. And actually, uh, the other person that's going to be helping us uh, during this series is Dean Vitale. Uh, Dean is a foodie. There really isn't, I don't think, any kind of food, Dean, that you don't like. Is there really? Maybe, I don't know, you can explain that here in... Okay, least is Greek. Okay, but apart from that, yeah, Dean can chow down pretty well with the best of them there. And uh, so Dean has uh, been a friend of John Bell also for a number of years. And so there are going to be a couple of weeks when I'm not going to be here at all. And so Dean is going to be here. But also, we're just going to be doing some interchanges uh, before and after sessions. So you'll see him commonly uh, up here. So just before he steps up, just a reminder, bring your binders back each week. And then you'll get uh, new paper for the next session when you come next Saturday morning. If you really enjoyed this, uh, if you have friends, and especially for guys who attend this church, uh, make sure you just tell some guys at church like tomorrow and say, you know, this is really a good series. You ought to come. It is not too late to get started in this. And uh, we also will have coffee and donuts here every week. So if you, when you come early, if you want to, you can just grab something here. I noticed uh, several, like me, bring your own coffee. Um, and maybe we're coffee snobs, I'm not sure. But the point is we'll have coffee here for you, and we'll have uh, donuts as well. So uh, with that, uh, thanks so much again for coming out. And now Dean's going to explain what's next. Hey, guys, first of all, uh, I want to say congratulations to all of you guys. I want to say great job by showing up this morning. You know, I'm a, a regular guy, so I know exactly what it takes to get here. Some of you, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, getting up early. Some guys say, you know what, this is not early for me. Some guys say, you know what, my wife really has the day planned. Some guys are not married. But I just want to say congratulations just for showing up today. And I will tell you, if you make a commitment to this, as a regular guy, I've gone through this many times. I'm one of those guys that has to go back to the class because there's so many things that I might have missed. And I'm telling you, if you saw that movie, 
And you say, okay, well, what's, what's all that about? It's about that retraining. And all of us mentioned that. But you have to understand that you're going to go through a retraining. Because some of us, like myself, I was told wrong things growing up. I was told the, the wrong things of what it takes to be a man. And then I corrected that, but later in life. The other thing I want to say, it's never too late. You know, I look at Kyle at the control booth there, and I thought, wow, what a young guy to get some of this knowledge, because it's going to seep in there. And I thought, that's tremendous. So let me tell you how this impacted my life, all right? So I have a 30-year-old daughter, and she uh, was dating this gentleman for quite some time, and he said, you know, Mr. Vitali, I'd like to take you to lunch. Well, I know Alex wasn't going to pay for lunch, so I thought something's going on. And he said to me, I'd like to ask your blessing to marry your daughter. And I said, you know, Alex, before I answer that, I want you to go through a program with me. And it was a program much like this. So guys, if you're sitting out there now and you have daughters, even sons that should actually be here, you can see that there is value to this. He said, what? I have to go through a program? I said, yeah, it's, you know, we'll sit down, we'll have some coffee, and we'll talk about some things. So Natalie's been married two years. And I will tell you, Alex calls me regularly or texts me regularly and says, hey, I've got some questions. you got some time for coffee. And we go through some of the same material. If you're a grandfather and you look and you say, well, I could really uh, use some guidance from my grandchildren. What you're going to learn here, and if you apply it. See, it's all about application. It's just not like, oh, come to this because you're going to hear some things. It's when you're going to apply it. And, you know, I really believe that the Holy Spirit prompts us when we don't act the way God programmed us to act. And especially when we have this. It's like what John said, what triggers you? I used to have a horrible temper horrible temper. And now, when I feel that welling up, and then I remember that I could get joy in 90 seconds, that doesn't give me license to go nuts for 90 seconds, by the way. <laughs> what that gives me is a trigger, and I say, this is not going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to either A, walk away, say this is not a good time. I'm not going to let into that. I'm not going to give way to that anger anymore. Now, I, I'm 58 years old, and I've been practicing this now for more than 10 years, and this is not just a flash in the pan, even longer than that. So here's what I would say to you guys. If you have sons, you should try to say, hey, you know what? You might want to come to this. If you have good friends, you could say, hey, you know what? This is not a church thing, guys. You can come to this. And you know, like John says, you can share the material, but there's nothing better than sitting down with these guys here and doing the next thing that we're going to do. This goes against everything that we were taught. I know because I remember when I first, where were you guys at? Now, some of you guys are experienced in this. This is, you know, fire teams, whatever you call them. This is a group of guys that will get together and start talking. Now, it's not going to get weird in the very beginning, but like this guy, these guys said, hey, we know everything about each other. That took decades, right? Okay, that's not what this is going to be. I remember when I was emceeing with John many years ago, at this time, a lot of guys would head to the door. They would head to the door like, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to do that. This is, not, this is not goofy. This is not crazy. This is not weird. This is a couple guys talking about life. That's what this is. And at this level, it's just basically, you know, kind of a dinner chat. So wherever you are in life, if you're a young guy with young children or young married or if you're a, a senior, wherever you are in life, this is going to be great information if you give it a chance and you're willing to retrain. If you're not willing to retrain, you're not going to be the champion that Rocky turned it on. I mean, Rocky was a champion because he was willing to retrain. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break up into small groups. Oh, I hate that. I hear that all the time, right? No, we're going to break up into small groups. A couple guys, if you're next to each other, 
And uh, we're going to give you some questions that you could kind of launch from, talk about some things. Again, this is not deep at this level. This is just kind of a commitment. So in a minute, we're going to do that. So kind of look around and say, hey, you guys want to, are you guys good? You guys want to meet here? You guys want to meet here? That's what we're going to do. And we're going to talk. You could grab some coffee, grab a donut. I don't know. Can they eat it in here or no? Okay. You could, you know, come back here and just kind of go through some questions. What'd you learn today? What's interesting? What do you think? But I would also remind you that throughout the week, you're driving to your car, say, you know what? I'm going to give Jeff a call. He needs to hear this. And uh, I'm going to talk to my son. In closing, I just want to tell you one thing. About uh, five years ago when we were presenting a program much like this, a gentleman came up to me and said, you know, I really wish that I had this information earlier. I'm estranged from my son, and uh, I feel bad every day. I wish I had this information earlier. About six months ago, he texted me. He said, hey, give him a minute. I'd like to talk. <laughs> well, what, what Dennis did was he reached out to his son. He flew out to see him. And uh, they had a great talk. They reconnected. And he wanted to tell me that it was because of the things he learned in men's ministry that urged him to do those things, and his time in prayer has now rebuilt the relationship, and he's reunited with his son, and they're both picking up where they left off. This is important stuff. So guys, at this time, I want you to kind of, uh, you know, be a man about it, grab a couple guys, uh, and start talking about uh, what we learned today, start talking about uh, some light things, and... Uh, Remember, really, try to invite somebody to come back or at least pick up this material. Remember, if we fix the men, we'll fix this world. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it.